hands with me, won't you? Father, we love you this morning. We love being in your house with your people. We love this place of grace and love where your spirit fills this place and the hearts of these people. We pray, Lord, that your amazing presence, your glory will fill this place that we will know beyond any shadow of a doubt that we are in the presence of your holiness. We come this morning, Father, wanting to remember those that have given their lives for our country, those that have served, those that have made our freedoms possible. We want to remember them and honor them, and we do even as we remember you and the fact that you're the one that gives us ultimate freedom. Thank you, Lord, for your gift to us and for theirs. As we come to you today, Father, we, uh, we think of the church in Texas, outside of San Antonio, the small place it was ravaged last week by senseless evil. And we pray for those that have lost loved ones, for those that have been traumatized, for those that are hurting. When they come together to worship this week, Father, some of them with you in heaven and some of them still left here below, would your amazing spirit fill their presence and bring a healing, comforting touch to their hurting hearts? Help them, Father. And Lord, this day, it would seem good that we would pray the prayer that you've taught us to pray. And it would be good if we would pray it together. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. stand before the righteous judge scars in his hands and feet the small and great he died for all on Calvary The scars say, I love you. The wounds say, I bled for you. The blood says, forgiven, oh ever shown then he who knew no sin our right 
righteousness our only hope is found in him the stars say I love you the some stuff that uh, that we've been dealing with in the uh, church board some things that I think you would find interesting that's really going on behind the scenes and well you probably won't know unless we tell you uh, right now we're not currently using the uh, the parsonage next door for staff housing although we expect to at some time in the future but that is a large house it's a really big house. And uh, we have come up with the concept that we're going to uh, subdivide that, uh, that parsonage and create the lower level as guest housing for when, uh, when we have uh, speakers, uh, other guests, and uh, with the help of uh, John Cromwell and the PATH and, and some others, uh, we've got that almost put together, and I think that's pretty cool. John, where's John? John's back there. Thank you, John, Thank you. Uh, for the work that's been put in on that. Uh, second thing, uh, teens, you ought to perk up and listen to this. Um, in our past, there was an individual, individuals, that left a... Uh, a nice sum of money as an endowment fund. What does that mean? Well, from that, Hernando Church of the Nazarene provides scholarships to its, um, its members who go away to one of our Christian colleges or schools. And uh, a few years back, uh, that was invested uh, safely but a little more aggressively and this year I'm pleased to announce that the scholarship uh, for the for the year that will be awarded is in excess of eight thousand dollars isn't that cool uh, 
Now, now, teens, the way that that is set up is that no one can get more than half of the monies that are available. We only awarded one of those. So that means if there was somebody else that wanted to go to one of our schools, that that money would have been, it's, it's there waiting. And uh, the, the award recipient for this year is, is Michelle Varnador. She is enrolled full time at Trevecca Nazarene University online. But uh, she's, she's doing that even while she's doing all the other stuff she's doing. Say thank you to her for <laughs> You don't get two thank yous in one day. No, that's enough out of you. Uh, the third item. Um, we do live in a crazy world, don't we? Um, you know, we cannot eliminate risk from our lives. Because somebody has a traffic accident, you did not stay home this morning Oh, I might get in a traffic accident. You didn't do that. There's risk to living. Because in some other place, at a, some other time, a church faced a horrendous, evil situation. That doesn't mean that you stayed home this morning. You came. And wisely so. But even though we understand that we can't eliminate all risk, we do believe that there are proper steps that we can take. And uh, we as your church board, with the uh, help of some others, Paul Stevio is, is helping us. He's a retired police officer. We've made contact with the sheriff's department and we're going to look a little more closely at how we can upgrade church security so that our people will be safe. Um, you know, frankly, we're not going to tell you all the stuff that we know that we're doing. <laughs> so there. <laughs> but uh, just let it be said that we're going to do what we can make sure that people are as safe as possible. Um, I want to thank you for your continued faithfulness, for your continued support of the ministry and work of the Hernando Church of the Nazarene. It's his ministry. Let's give him praise as our ushers come this morning. Thank you, Father, for your goodness. Thank you for your blessings. Receive this offering as our expression of love to you. Amen. Yes. 
just hold his hand I don't need to understand I just need to hold his hand I don't need to ever ask the reason why I know he'll make a way through the night and through the day. I don't need to understand. I just need to hold his hand. When my calls me to my home up there upon the golden shore. Oh, I'll look back, review the path that lay before me. But I won't Hold his hand I don't need to ever ask the reason why For I know he'll make a way Through the night and through the day just need to hold his hand. It says in uh, the bulletin that we're going to look at one particular scripture from Colossians, but we're really not. We just put that there just because we didn't know what we were doing at that time. That's, uh, no, it's been a, uh, a challenging week in some ways, but I would ask you to turn to 1 Peter chapter 1. When I um, hear the song that was just sung and the, uh, the song of the choir earlier, and the scripture and the message that we're about to look at, uh, I see the work of God Amen. that was a whole lot more <laughs> involved than what any of us knew about. I think it's kind of neat. First Peter chapter one, beginning of verse one, stand with us. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to God's elect, exiles scattered throughout the provinces of Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, who've been chosen according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through the sanctifying work of the Spirit to be obedient to Jesus Christ and sprinkled with his blood. Grace and peace be yours in abundance. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you 
who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In all this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him, and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Concerning this salvation, the prophets who spoke of the grace that was to come to you searched intently and with the greatest care trying to find out the time and circumstances to which the Spirit of Christ in them was pointing when he predicted the sufferings of the Messiah and the glories that would follow. It was revealed to them that they were not serving themselves but you when they spoke of the things that have now been told you by those who have preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven. Even Angels long to look into these things. You may be seated. What a crazy world of suffering we live in. It all just doesn't make sense. We went through a, a season of hurricanes. Just doesn't make sense. People in Houston, they just got, got blasted. But pretty soon we weren't talking about them anymore because there were other people getting blasted somewhere else. Puerto Rico, pretty much the island was blown away. Here we're talking, what was it, eight weeks, nine weeks? It's still a large portion of the island has no electricity. Their infrastructure has just been all blown away. People have just been totally devastated. In some places, they're just loading their people aboard planes and Shipping them to the United States almost like we're not going to be able to rebuild for months or years. And then last Sunday morning, in a little church in Sutherland Springs, when Michelle and I lived in uh, San Antonio, Southern Spring, Sutherland Springs is one of those towns that's about 30 miles outside of San Antonio. I didn't even know it existed. That's how little the place is. But a madman walks into church dressed in black tactical style gear and armed with an assault rifle and opens fire. 26 people were killed from ages 5 to 72 years old. A woman who was eight months pregnant and her in-laws were among the dead. Stupid, stupid, evil. We live in a world of suffering. But God has not closed his eyes to our plight. The book of First Peter is written to Christians who live in a world of suffering. It, it's written to help us to, in the midst 
of the craziness that we live to reflect on what God is doing in our lives. What and how does God bring us hope in this world of suffering? Well, we learned some things here in, um, in 1 Peter, in this passage we've read. The first thing is this, God's shielding power brings us hope. The loneliness of suffering can devastate us. Somehow when suffering comes, it feels as if we suffer alone. Sometimes that's just how we feel. Even if we're in the midst of a crowd, we may feel isolated and like, I'm in this all alone. When someone comes with a helpful intention, with, when someone with a helpful intention comes and says, I know how you feel. There's something that screams up within us, no, you don't. Nobody could understand how much I hurt. But if you know the loneliness of suffering, you must also know about God's protecting power. Peter writes about that. He says we're shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. But the good news of God's protecting power that's written for us in verse 5 is followed by the troubling realization in verse 6 that says, now for a little while you may have to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. Well, thanks for the bright sunshine there, Peter. Yeah, God doesn't shield us from all suffering. Well, then what's this thing about God's protecting power you're talking about, Randy? Well, what it's saying is that God protects those of us who believe from anything that would destroy our salvation. You know, God is really concerned about taking care of us ultimately. He's, he's got his eyes on the bigger picture. You and I see life from a very limited perspective. We're kind of trapped in the here and now. And we think of our lives in terms of a few decades, a few years that we have left. Huh. God says, ah, no, 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 I see the bigger picture. I'm preparing you to live not just for your time here on earth, I'm setting you up for eternity. And I've got your salvation, your eternal salvation covered. God provides a keeping power, a power that protects believers from having the salvation Christ has bought for us. He prevents that from being ripped away. No matter how much this world throws at us, God's keeping power is greater. Amen. I like this story. She was just 12 years old. And in a moment, this Ethiopian, Ethiopian girl's world turned into a nightmare. Seven violent men abducted this pre-teenage girl, intending to force her into marriage. The men held the girl for seven days, beating her repeatedly. In Ethiopia, such incidents are common. The several men band together to abduct young girls for the purpose of securing a bride. Wow, that's one way to get a wife. They must be really ugly. <laughs> no, that's not in the story. 
<laughs> the girls are typically beaten into submission and raped. In this particular instance, there was not a human being within earshot to hear the cries of this girl. But there didn't need to be because her cries were heard otherwise. The unlikely heroes were three majestic Ethiopian lions. They're famous for their large black manes. These lions are the national symbol of the country. They're equivalent to our bald eagle. In response to the girls' cries for help, three large lions leapt from the brush and chased her captors away. Perhaps the child thought she had traded one danger for another. But remarkably, the three lions formed a protective perimeter around her. A half day later, when the police arrived, the guardian lion simply stood up and walked away. The sergeant, I'm not going to try to pronounce his name, said, they stood guard until we found her. Then they just left her like a gift and went back into the forest. Among the explanations for the lion's unusual behavior, one wildlife expert suggested the girl's whimpering could have sounded like a lion cub. For whatever reason, the predator served as the protector. The carnivore became a sentinel. Everyone thinks this is some kind of miracle. The 12-year-old girl was helpless, powerless to change her horrific circumstances. Her deliverance had to come from a power greater than and outside of herself. And in many ways, our deliverance needs to come from someone more powerful and greater than we are. God's shielding power. Yeah. Now please understand, while God's power can shield us from spiritual harm, we can choose to remove ourselves from the safety of his power through deliberate disobedience or intentionally pulling away from God. We can expose ourselves to spiritual disaster. We can lose out with God but only if we walk away from him, he will never walk away from us. But we don't need to pull away from God. We don't need to lose God's protection. God's shielding and protecting power brings us hope. And when we grab onto God, we grab on to hope. I'd like you to say that with me. When we grab on to God, we grab on to hope. There's another thing. There's another thing that God does to bring us hope in our world of suffering. God's ability to use trouble for our good brings us hope. In 1 Peter 1, verses 6 and 7, we read this. For a little while, you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Trials, trouble, pain. Let me ask a question of you. Is there anyone here that has too little trouble in your life? <laughs> you got too little trouble? We'll take care of that for you. <laughs> no one gets up in the morning and longs for a day with more problems. 
Nobody gets up and says, Lord, everything's just going too well. Send me some garbage today. <laughs> but of the trouble we do have, here's a truth to bring us hope. When we commit ourselves to God, he uses our troubles for our good. Paul wrote about this in the book of Romans. In all things, God works for the good of those who love him. Amen. He takes trials and difficulties. And through them, he stretches our faith and strengthens our trust and deepens our confidence in him. Malcolm Muggeridge wrote these words. He says, contrary to what might be expected, I look back on the experiences that at the time seemed especially desolating and painful with particular satisfaction. Indeed, I can say with complete truthfulness that everything I have learned in my 75 years in this world, everything that is, has truly enhanced and enlightened my experience has been through affliction and not through happiness. Huh. How's that work? The stuff that we learn comes not when everything's going great. But the stuff that we learn that seems to matter later on are the things that we learned when we were going through tough times. It is through seeing what God has done for us in the past that we realize what he will do for us in the future. And with this realization, even the trials of life bring us hope. Lord, I don't like this, and I sure wish life would get easier, but I know you're going to use it for my good. God has not promised skies ever blue, flower-strewn pathways always for you. God has not promised sun without rain, joy without sorrow, or peace without pain, but he has promised strength from above, unfailing sympathy, and undying love. Jesus says, in this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I've overcome the world. And God's ability to use trouble for our good brings us hope. Amen. And when we grab on to God, we grab on to hope. Amen. The hope that I'm talking about is far different than this world's idea of hope. This world's idea of hope is it's, well, this is something I'd like to happen. Maybe it could happen. Boy, if things work perfectly, this would fall into place. No, I'm not talking about that kind of hope. I'm talking about something more. I'm talking about something that's impossible for those who don't know Jesus. The hope of the believer is not a wishful thinking. It's based on God's unshakable character. Yes. This hope can be ours only by placing our entire trust and confidence in Jesus Christ. It is one thing to know about Jesus. It is quite another to really know him, to trust him, to place our entire self into his strong hands. God's word says it this way, though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy for you are receiving the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Yeah. Amen. You know Jesus Christ as your own savior? Do you have residing within you that, that hope 
that is more than wishful thinking, that hope that is an assurance that God has you in his strong hands and he will not turn loose. That is the hope that can be yours in Jesus Christ. To really know Jesus is to really know hope. <coughs> Experiencing that living relationship with Jesus brings us hope that this world cannot take away. Amen. <laughs> we got it. And when you grab onto God, you grab onto hope. Yes. We can say that better, can't we? When we grab on to God, we grab on to hope. Well, what shall we do with this? For those who've already put their faith and trust in Christ Jesus, the call today is simply grab on and hang on. Grab on to the hope that is already ours in Christ Jesus. Grab on to knowing that no matter what the world throws at us, we are more than conquerors through him who loves us. Grab on to God, and we grab on to hope. But if you don't know Jesus, the call is different. For those who have not yet committed themselves to Christ, it's time to get on board. Get on board with God and your life will change. Get on board with God and peace will come. Get on board with God and even in the darkest days, God's grace and strength will give you hope. Get on board by taking Jesus Christ as your own Savior. Get on board. Grab on. And no matter what we may face, an unshakable confidence in God. Hope can be ours. Amen. When we grab onto God, we grab onto hope. Pastor Walt, we're going to sing as our closing song. Number 256. Do we have that, Jerry? Nope. Probably not. Yeah, I guess we do. Very cool. Stand with us as we sing. <laughs> God sent his son, they called him Jesus, he came to heal, heal and forgive, he lived and died to buy my pardon, an empty grave is there to Prove my Savior lives because he lives. I can face tomorrow because he lives. All fear is gone because I know. Then one day I'll cross the river, I'll fight life's trial war with pain. And then as death gives way to victory, 
I'll see the light of glory and I'll know He lives because He lives I can face tomorrow because He lives all fear is gone because I know And the life is worth the living just because He lives. Father, we thank you today that you have met us. We thank you today that you have joined with us to bring us assurance, encouragement, strength, and hope place into the hearts of these your people a joy that cannot be extinguished and let us go into your world to glorify your name thank you lord amen god's blessings have a great week